and that requires this much of energy. Going from here to here means it is going to uh, some third the different types of orbitals, so that requires more energy. So each one of these things corresponds to the transition of electrons from one orbital to different orbital. Now, as you see here, there is zero here small. That is corresponding to this one. So the arrow is small, the energy required is small. So it is a longer wavelength. The longer the wavelength, smaller the energy. And this one, so this one you see here, this is absorption. Corresponding to your zero to your two, that is this one. And the last one here is the big line that corresponds to more energy. This, this, this is going here and here and here. So all these are different transitions. Okay, so that is one thing. The other thing is, if you notice, the probability of for this, if you put light through this molecule, the probability of the molecule going from S0 to S1 is smaller. S0 to S2 is little bit more. S0 to S3 is more. The higher the intensity, it tells you when your light is going through your uh, sample, how uh, how much efficiency the molecule will absorb is measured by the height of this absorption. So the, when you see the absorption like this, and then like this, smaller one means that transition is weak. And the one that is big, that means the transition is strong. So there are two things. The energy that is acquired, and then the second thing is the probability if you give the energy, whether it will take. So the probability of the energy whether it will take is measured by this number here. This is what is called as extinction coefficient. And these ones are measured by wavelength. So you can tell the wavelength, tell the wavelength and wavelength, then you can tell where is this one, that one and that. So why this one is higher, this one is a little bit less, and this one is very small and there is another transition here is extremely small. That means, although it requires only a small amount of energy, when you light passes through this sample, it will not absorb the uh, light, even though it may be needed to go to that transition. That particular, as you see here, this is very tiny. Now the question is, why each one has a different probability of absorption? Absorption means when the light goes through, the molecule will, be, will take it. And that, it does not correspond to the energy. In the energy. So even if you provide this much of energy or this and that, then some cases will take it, some cases it will not take it. The question is why? Okay? So to understand why, you need to know when the light is passing through, what happens to the molecule. Okay? So if you take the molecules, this corresponds to the ground state, that is this one. This corresponds to the excited state, that say it's S1. And then if you have S2, S3, then we will have more of these two. Okay. So, we already know from yesterday, long lectures, each state has got an electronic configuration, a nuclear configuration, and a spin configuration. So, for example, in this R, we represent the molecule by this particular function. This function consists of where the electrons are. And also it tells you where the nuclei are. And also it tells you, tells you something about the spin of electrons. So all of these things are contained in this particular small cycle. So when it goes to the excited state, let's say it goes to S1. Now, this is different from this. This is not exactly the same. So if you take an electron from one orbital and put it in a different orbital, the electronic configuration will change. That will also affect the positions of the nuclear. And also, the spin may or may not be the same. Okay. So this one is different from this. So go from here to here, you need this piece of energy. That much of energy is what is the percentage here. That much of energy comes from light. When the molecule goes, when the light goes through, 
it will take up that corresponding wavelength of light. Okay. So basically, you have the two electrons, and you take one electron from here to here, and then you get this particular state. So this part, the function psi one, it has got three different things. You have, when you say a molecule, like when you say somebody, they have head, they have heart, they have leg. So same thing. So you have this is the psi one corresponding to the heart, which is electronic, and this one corresponds to vibration, maybe legs and the spin may be right. So it can take all three. But if you keep this guy or uh, take it to the different state, it can take the same electronic vibration and the spin, but they may not be identical. If it is identical, the electric will be the same. So what happens is when you go see for example, you can see there are two electrons in the highest octet. In this particular part, arrangement, there is one electron in the highest upper part, there is one electron in different orbital. So taking the electron from here and putting it here, now what happens is the energy of this state, that is the R star, that is S1, is different from this, it is not the same. Since it is different, then you have to provide this with energy, that energy is com coming from the light. So if you even if you provide the light, whether the molecule will take, will depend upon the, this particular function here, electronic, the vibration, and the spin. If they are similar, there's a good chance the, the molecule will take the light. If they are very different, then even if you provide the light, it will not take it. If it doesn't take it, that means there is no absorption. And so now we want to see what is going on here. Okay, we, will, we need to understand these things a little bit more detail. Okay. Now, we take here. So these types of things are called electronic transitions. That means electron is moving from one orbital to a different orbital. Whether this electronic transition is allowed or permitted, it depends upon the two orbitals in which the electrons are. Okay. So what is that? You take this formula. You remove the external compound. So there is an there are electrons between the carbon and the oxygen, that is a sigma bond. There is an electron between the carbon and the oxygen, that is a pi bond. There is also electrons in the n orbitals, that is here. If you remember, he said there are going to be two electrons, the two electrons here and two electrons here. So this electron from here, it can go to the corresponding pi star. Or the electron from here, it can go to pi star. So we remember, yesterday we said there are two types of transitions, which are called as m to pi star. The other one is called as pi to pi star. That means there is one electron here and one electron here. One here and one here. So this is going to say for example this one. So what happens is, in the ground state, there are two electrons in this orbital, there are two electrons in that orbital, but when you provide enough energy, it could happen is this electron from pi, it can go to pi star, or one electron from n can go to get a pi star. So it will be two different types of transitions. They are called as n pi star or pi pi star. The electron which has present in the pi orbitals is going to pi star, or the electron present in the n orbital goes to the pi star. Tell me between the n to pi star, n pi star, and pi pi star, which one is lower in energy? <coughs> pi star is, that you can see this is the gap, pi pi star is the from here to here, so bigger arrow that means more energy and the small arrow less energy. So if you take this, put this half mode in some solvent and take an absorption spectrum, then you will see absorption corresponding to this gap and also absorption corresponding to that gap. So you will see two absorptions for so something to be like this. So if you have an absorption spectrum 
and wavelength and extreme coefficient for the future. So the wavelength is going this way. Okay. So this there are two of the two bumps. One bump corresponds to this one, the other one corresponds to that one. Tell me which of these two will absorb at a longer wavelength.
So, going from year 0 to S1, this requires not much energy. S0 to S2 requires a little bit more than this. S0 to S3, more than this. And S0 to S4, much more than uh, any one of those things. And so that is represented here on the, on the bottom. The bottom is in wavelength. The shot of the wavelength is S0 to S4, that is this one. The next one is uh, longer, slightly longer than this, longer than this, and the last one is the small one. So here you can see the first one, which is the electron going from S0 to S1 is much less probable compared to going to S2, S3, or S4. Also, although this requires not much energy, even if you provide energy, the electron doesn't want to go from S0 to S1. So now, obviously there is some problem. Uh, so just because you give a lot of, a lot of money to somebody, you need to get someone to spend it. So you want to take the money. Okay. So, so why, for example, in this compound, this first transition is what we, what we would call as permitted transition. That means this transition is not likely. And these are all allowed transitions. Why this transition is Okay, this compound, tell me whether it contains n to pi star or pi to pi star transition. What type of transition do you want? Is, for example, here, there is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this is a small, but you can see it is there. Okay. So, when you have, when you say these transitions, you will call them as n to pi star or pi to pi star. What do you call them? So when you come to the ground state, 
can also directly go to the triplet. Here is 0, going to the triplet, and that particular transaction, if you look here, it is extremely small. Okay. So obviously there are three different things. The electron going from m to pi star is weaker than going from pi to pi star. And then among the pi to pi star, some of them are strong, some of them are weak. And then the electron going from singlet to triplet is very weak. Question is why it is very weak. Okay. Before we go to all this stuff, S1, S2, S3, S4. There is going to be a triplet. The triplet will be lower or higher in R. For example, the S1 is going to be a triplet, T1. The T1 will be here or here. It will be lower or higher than the signal. Higher. Yes. Okay, so we said yesterday, singlet and the triplet, the triplet will always be lower in energy than the corresponding singlet. Corresponding singlet means S1, the T1 will be lower. So you can see it here. S0 to S1, that is this one, and S0 to T1 is this one. And this is very, very small. And this one is more than this. And this one is coming at a much longer wavelength than this one. Longer wavelength means lower energy. And this is okay. So there are three things which you need to figure out what is the need. So the intensity of this, this is what is called the intensity of the absorption or intensity of the peaks, which is a representation of the excision coefficient. That is the reflection of whether the transition is allowed or permitted. The probability of the transition happening is measured by the excision coefficient. Whether the probability will happen or not depends upon some rules. Okay. So we need to figure out what are those rules. Okay. All right. So we'll see here. So this is the intensity at a given wavelength. It depends upon the alpha, and in, in a way, it is actually the excision coefficient. The excision coefficient depends upon something called as oscillator strength. Oscillator strength means the light goes through the molecule, whether it can oscillate the electrons to move from one orbital to different orbital. That is the oscillator strength. Stop. The higher the oscillator strength, stronger the absorption, the larger the excision coefficient. Okay. The oscillator strength, the maximum is 1. It can be less than 1. Okay. So here, the now, if you remember from the whole uh, thing, each state is defined by electronic, vibronic, and then the spin. Okay. So when you go from one state, from ground state to the excited state, there is going to be electronic change. The electron is going from one orbital to a different orbital. And also when electron going from a 0 to s one, the degree of position will change because now the electrons are in different configuration that will affect the position of the nuclear. So there is going to be a different. And lastly, the, the spin of the electrons between S0 to S1, S0 to Q1 are different. All these three things will decide whether the particular transition is going to be allowed or permitted. So there are three things. The electronic part, vibrational part, and the spin part will decide whether when you pass the light through this compound, whether it will absorb or not. Okay. So this is going back to our <coughs> First of all, for electronic transition, that is basically what is happening is electrons are in some orbitals. When you shine light on this, it is going from this orbital to a different orbital. So that is there is a change, electron is moving from orbital to orbital. Okay. So for example, if you have So you have electrons here, that is pi of 
there are two electrons here. And the action is going to go to 5 star. 5 star is going to look like this. This is a 5 and 5 star. So what will happen is, one electron will go from here to this orbit. Whether the electron will go from here to here, that is what is called, it depends upon the, the overlap between this orbital and that orbital. Electron will have to go from one place to another place. So to go from here to here, there needs to be a path. For that path is what we call overlap. If there is no overlap between this orbital and that orbital, then the transition is permitted. Okay, that's what we call permitted. The overlap, and then the other one is called as symmetry. I'll okay, tell you what exactly is it to go uh, involved compared to the symmetry. There are two basic principles which will decide whether the electron will go from one orbital to a different orbital when we do the energy. First thing is the two orbitals that are involved in the transition, there should be an overlap. That is, here and here they should be able to match. Although it will be a higher energy. They should be able to overlap. That's how the electron from here, you can move here. The other one is, they should have different symmetry, the two orbitals. They cannot have identical symmetry. Okay? That is what it will decide. Okay, so you can see now. So, for example, there are various types of transitions. Sigma bond, pi bond, and then n orbital. Okay? Two electrons from here, it goes to the pi star, that is n pi star. Pi and pi star, that is one going from here to here, or the n going to sigma star. So, in any molecule, that can be number of different transitions. It depends upon what type of orbitals are there in the molecule. So, it is a given molecule, this is the n, pi, and sigma. This will be filled. Two, two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here, and these are empty. The electrons will go from field orbital to empty orbital. It will not go from field orbital to field orbital. For example, tell me, if you have two electrons here, why there is no transition from this one to that one? Or from here to here? So we don't have a sigma to m or pi to m. We always call m pi star or pi pi star but not pi to pi or sigma to pi. Tell me why. So why? If you look at all the arrows, this one, this one, this one, there will be no arrow point from here to here, or from here to here. Why? Why there is no arrow? So, if you take a two electron, 
going from parasitic mark to pine. So if you take one electron from here and put it here, this will become three electrons. Or you take two electrons from the end and then put it in the end orbital. This has got two, this has got two. If you take one from here and put it here, it will become three. So always each orbital cannot have more than two. So the transitions are always going to be from field orbital to the empty orbitals. Okay, field orbitals are sigma, pi, and m. So that's why you see here the transitions are starting from field orbitals, that is, this is m going to pi star. And then m going to sigma star, or pi going to pi star, or and then R5 going to sigma star. So always going from field orbitals to the empty orbitals. Okay. So now, well, there are different types of transitions here. You can see there's a pi to pi star, then there's an n to pi star, and then pi to sigma star. But all transitions are not equally probable. Some of them are probable, some of them are less likely. So based you know, for the first rule is, for the transition to be more likely, the two orbitals that are involved in the transition, the two orbitals involved in this transition, for example, n by star or m by star. For example, in the pi to pi star transition, the two orbitals are pi and pi star. So these are the two orbitals that are involved. So only you have to focus those two orbitals and make a decision whether this is going to happen or not going to happen. Okay. Now, that depends upon one of these things is called as R of the overlap. Whether these two orbitals can overlap. If there is no overlap, the transition is zero. It should be zero. It should not happen. Because if you have an orbital like this, another orbital like that, the electron going from here to here is not going to happen. because there is no more, the electron, it has to find a way to get here. If they are perpendicular, it is not going to be possible. On the other hand, if we have a pi orbital and a pi star orbital, they are in the same area. <coughs> so that can be an overlap. So pi pi star is uh, more likely, it is, a, it is an allowed transition. Okay. All right. Now, this is one, but it is called overlap. Something else is also the symmetry. If you go back, I don't know whether you remember the spectrum for pi d. Pi d spectrum, I showed you, you remember the spectrum? <coughs> so what is that you remember about pi d spectrum? Pi d, you remember the spectrum I showed you? Maybe like 10 minutes ago. In the pi beam, all the transitions we said are pi to pi star. But for example, here, this pi to pi star is very weak, this pi to pi star is very strong. So, although they are both are pi to pi and pi star, they are in the same regions. There's a pi here, pi star is over here, so that can be an overlap. But that pi pi star is weak, this pi pi star is very strong. The reason is nothing to do with overlap because the two electric the orbitals can overlap. The problem is these two orbitals are of the same symmetry. What <coughs> why that is important as well. Okay. We said it is a it is a, it is a wave, it is a particle, and all these things. So it is for this purpose. If you think of it more like a wave, it is much easier to understand what goes on. So when this light is moving through the, in the room, we basically get the electromagnetic radiation. So it is it goes like a wave, and then perpendicular to the axis, it creates a magnetic field. Because when the charged particle moves, there is always a magnetic field perpendicular, like electricity. So the, the light 
carries a negative charge. So when this one is, as you see here, this is the one which is going, the wave is going, the distance between this is the wave, uh, the wave length, and as it moves, it will have a perpendicular axis, which is magnetic. So this is called, that's why it is called light, is called as electromagnetic radiation, or it will have both the components, electric, electrical component and magnetic component, which are perpendicular, okay? Electrical means, this, this is negatively charged, so when it goes through a molecule, it can push the electrons because this is negatively charged, the electrons are also going to be negatively charged, so what is going to be there is going to be motion, so it will push the electrons either the, uh, this way or that way, so it doesn't want to be in the way, so when the light is going through the molecule, the electrons will go up and down. Okay. When they move, they will go to an orbital, which is that's where they are eventually going to go. The transition is from the original orbital, down the electrons are being pushed by this uh, incoming light, so it will go to a different orbital. Whether that orbital and this original orbital, whether they can overlap or symmetry or different, then the transition will be allowed. If not, it will not. Okay, so look at here. This is something like this. You may have studied this in physics, of course. Now, if you think of the molecule, this is the electrons are for sent for example in the S orbit. So if you have say, say let's say hydrogen, it is has an S orbital, the electrons are like a cloud surrounding this S orbital. Now the light is going to come through this molecule. When it is coming through, it is a it is a powerful electrical field. So when it is going through, it is going to go up now like a wave. So the electrons will be pushed up and pushed down. So when it's pushed up and down, if you look at this, it looks like a P orbit. So these electrons, what will happen is when it is coming down, it will push it up, and when it's going down, it will push it down. At the end of it, if you look at here, as the light is going through, the S orbital looks like a P orbital. So what will happen is when the electrons that are present here, it will move into this orbital, that is what we would call as a transition. So the electron is transiting from the S orbital to the P orbital. Okay. The more important thing to notice is these two orbitals are of different symmetry. Symmetry <coughs> means, you know, if you take this, it looks like a sphere, it looks like this one looks like more like a very soft. So you cannot go. Now they are this one in the S orbital looks like a ball, and then when light is going through, the S orbital is converted to something like this. So now this yes sum that one they are not of same symmetry. You cannot overlap it. Okay. So when the light is going through, it is not like m and pi. m and pi are perpendicular. Here the pi, if you take for example the this is the sigma orbital. Okay. So this is the sigma orbital between this and this. And the light is going through. What will happen is the electron from the sigma bond will be pushed up and pushed down. So when, you, when this is, the thing coming like this, these are electrons, when the negative charge, repulsion is pushed up. And then when it comes down, then it push it down. So if you look at, this is sigma bond, and this one looks different. Just looking at it, you can say that looks like a different type of bond. Can you tell me what type of bond this one looks like? Okay, if you have a sigma bond with A and B, sigma bond is connecting along this axis. If it is a pi bond, it is going to be above and below. That is, your theoretical overlapping and overlapping, so there is a difference. Okay, so, this is a sigma bond. If, they are, if the light is going through the sigma bond, the electrons are going to be pushed up and pushed down. As you see here, the bond disappears. There is no bond here. Basically, the electrons are up and below. So, just from your perspective, what type of bond is this? They are the same area. See, this is this and that and overlap. The spatial wise, there is an overlap, but they look different. This is more like a pi, pi orbital. This is more like a sigma orbital. So when the when the light is going through this molecule, the sigma electrons will be converted into pi electrons. So that is sigma to pi transition. So that is 
So the, the symmetry for this and that are different. That's why in the last picture we had, we said the two transitions should involve orbitals that are of different symmetry. They cannot be the same symmetry. If the other one, if the, there is one orbital like this, there is another orbital like this where the electrons can go, then this that uh, the light cannot convert this orbital into another orbital the same. It will be converting always into something else which is looking different. So you have to have another orbital which is looking different from this orbital. If not, that translation into the orbital. Okay. Forbidden means the electron is having a hot time when the light is passing through, you know, the, 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 the electromagnetic radiation is negatively charged, it is going to frustrate the electrons, it has to move away from some other place. If there is no other place to move, that means it is just, it is not going to go. So it will not take the uh, uh, light. So it doesn't want energy, so the transition will be uh, a fundamental transition. Or the exchange partition will be very small. What do you think? Does it make any sense? Okay. Now, we look at here, a couple of things, and then we will see. So this is pi and a pi star. Pi and pi star, as you see here, they overlap. That means if the, if the light goes through this molecule, the pi electron from this orbital is going to the pi star, because there is a path. It is going from this room to that room. It, it is, it, we can do it. We can just go through the corridor and over and over. Suppose this room, this is one room, and the other room is on the other side of the building. You cannot go directly to get here. So that is going to be not easy. Okay. And you can see here, EM and the pi star. The M orbital and the pi star orbital, they are perpendicular. When it is perpendicular, the electron cannot move from here to here. So that transition, the M is pi star, is an overlap terminal transition. And pi pi star is an allowed transition because these two electrons from here we can move over here. The only difference is these two orbitals are of different symmetry. They are not the same symmetry. Because here, if you put this and this, here same color, but here this is white and black. So they are different symmetry. So that's how you have pi pi star transition is allowed. Then pi star transition is complete. Ideally, what should happen is if we have a molecule, we should not have a pi star transition. That it should be zero. But nothing is zero. So always there is a small probability. Even the zero transition we will see. That's why some of these transitions instead of being that big, it is something small. Something small will become something else. Okay? So okay. So here two pi star. The overlap between this and this. They are perpendicular, that is like this, and the other one is like that. These two orbitals, they are mixed, they are perpendicular, so electron from here to here, it cannot go through. They just have to jump from place to place. On the other hand, and pi to pi star, this is pi and pi star, so the same thing. And here, this and this, there is an overlap between here and here, excepting that this, uh, this is different symmetry from that one, but there is no overlap. So now, this transition, what we will call as, is allowed transition, and this one we will call as permitted transition. Permitted means external coefficient will be zero. Okay? Now, let's see. Okay. All these ideas are based on the assumption that the molecule is not moving. It is stationary. We assume in order to calculate the energy and the orbital, uh, the electronic structure, we said the molecule is stationary. But that is in my area for what is it approximation for? We there was a major case yesterday we said okay. Without that approximation, we would have a hard time to propagate to really the this. Okay, so we made the approximation. And said, although the molecule is always vibrating, he said, okay, we just keep it fixed and then we will calculate everything. And from there we go on back on. So that approximation is called as something that we have other name. Okay, 
can play a box to man very quickly. So I just look through and let you know I will just get behind my right arm. Okay. Okay, did you figure out the name? Yeah. And we made an approximation yesterday. Okay, we said the molecule is always vibrating. So when it is vibrating, the electronic structure constantly change. If it is constantly changing, then you cannot get any idea about the molecule. So we decided the molecule is not moving, it is stationary. With respect to that distance, we will calculate our way. After that, we will relax the idea slowly and then try to get ready to run. But on and on and on. That approximation came from two people. Those were the two guys who said this approximation is worth making that will help you to solve the problem. And one of the two people that we said that thing so many times yesterday. And also I told you he was one of those people who was involved in making the atom bomb. This 
is the operator. They are orthogonal. That means orthogonal means 90 degrees. When it is exactly like this, exactly 90 degrees, the overlap is zero. Okay? But then if it is slightly off for 90, when it becomes 65, now there is going to be a small overlap at the bottom. And that means the, the overlap here is going to be, if it is from zero, let's say it is point one. That means up, about 10% of the transition is going to become allowed. That's why when you see these peaks, they are not equal. One is big, another one becomes small. But the smaller one should be zero, but it becomes slightly, you see some peaks, it's because the vibration is mixing this kind of the orbit. So for example, look at this. This is the P orbit. And you take, for example, you see three tiny So if you have something like this. So this is the hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen ferric one electron here. Yeah, this is H3 ferric Now if you look at this, 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 this bond, that bond and that bond, they are all in the same plane, P orbital is like this. So these hydrogens, what can happen is, they will attract the vibrations. If they all come down, that is one of the vibrations. Now what will happen is, this part will become small, that part will become big. Because there is a repulsion between this orbital and the hydrogens. So that's what, what, that's what will happen here. So the shape of the orbitals will change depending upon the vibrations. When it does change, the original assumption of perpendicular and the non-zero overlap will not, be, will not be true. So for example here. Okay, this is, these two are uh, doing like this. And then if they both go down, like what I showed you, now you can see this is not exactly the same as this. The bottom is small, the top is big. And if you take same thing with the benzene radical. The P orbital, the hydrogen is coming down, the shape will change. Okay. So the idea that the orbitals are perpendicular, there is a zero overlap, is only true when the molecule is stationary. But in truth, the molecule is not stationary. So all the when you say it is perpendicular, zero overlap, that is not true. So if some vibration will make it, will make it, mix, will mix it, and then zero overlap will become point one, point two, and now the transition which was supposed to be zero, now it will become allowed. Same thing will happen. For example, if you take for example <coughs> here, there are two electrons in the n orbital. There are two electrons in the pi orbital. There are no electrons in the pi star. So the transitions are going to be electrons going from pi to pi star, or from m to pi star. So it's going to be m going to pi star, or pi going to pi star. If overlap is the only criteria, that means the two orbitals where the electrons are originally present and where it is going, there should be an overlap which of these two, which of the two is going to be allowed transitions. That is going from here to unity pi star, going from here to pi pi star. Based on overlap, which one you think it should be allowed? So it will take a lot of spectrum. Based on whatever we talked about. So that the important criterion for the transition is the two orbitals should overlap. If I say like that, when you take absorption, so let's say this is, so now, so what will happen is, you are going to have an n pi to pi stop, and then n to pi stop. Okay. So you think both of these things will be of equal intensity, or they will have one something under root zero, or one something under root something I need. So here, which one is the allowed transition? N to pi star. There are two transitions, N to pi star and pi to pi star. Which one do you think is allowed?
Okay, so the pi to pi star transition is the allowed transition. Because pi and pi star, there is no overlap. And n to pi star, n and pi star, they are perpendicular. So that transition is forbidden. So again, according to the, our argument, you should have this transition, and then this one should be nothing. That will be the ideal situation. But in the real situation, what happens is the molecule, this is based on the assumption that the molecule is stationary. If the molecule is not stationary, that means what will happen is this M and the price star, they will not be like this. They will be like this or they will be like this. In any kind of variation from this 90 degrees, it will result in some overlap. So now what will happen is you can see here. So that M pi star is what we call as string C. Okay, so don't worry about the details. Now in this <coughs> M and pi star orbitals, which were 0 mixing, that means they were 90 degrees with respect to each other. But if they start mixing, what happens is this transition will become allowed. So allowed but not 100 percent So what happens is this peak being completely flat you will see this getting to be a little bit like this. <coughs> so you will see something like this. Okay. So how much it is going to be here or here or all this stuff, it depends upon how much mixing is there between the two orbitals. In the right star, what kind of vibrations are mixing and all this stuff. One more thing and then I will move. So if you want to put all these things in some equations, then what happens is the first part of the that is the zero in the, the S1 is M to pi star. And then the close by is pi to pi star. But this and this they mix. This mixing is done by vibration in the one. And that one eventually leads to there are details, you don't need to know all Okay. So if you take a absorption spectrum, the spectrum, for example, this compound is going to be star. You can see it looks like this. The distance between these two corresponds to the vibration, which is mixing these two states, M and pi. You know, if you have studied the liquid of spectroscopy, you will know if you have a, a molecule with the N atoms. 3n minus 5 vibrations are possible. So if you have 3 atoms, 3n minus 5, there are 4 types of vibrations. If you have 4 atoms, 3 times 4 minus 5, so like that. So the lot of vibrations molecule can do. And depending on only one or two of those vibrations will make this n and pi orbital, orbital they overcome. Of those are vibrations which are mixing this molecule absorb light. And that one, you can see it here. This is this. If you see these things, it looks like a band. That is because what happens is we go back yesterday. So when we talk about transitions, so we have things like this. This and then we are going to have something like this. So you are going from here to here, and here to here, and here to here, like that. And this, if you see the gap, it is very, very small. This small gap is the one that comes out of the vibrations. And these things just tells you which vibration is mixing the model, uh, uh, making the transition with a uh, zero probability to some kind of small probability of transitions. This is very, this is very useful information. Okay. I think I will see what we have. And then you can see it is very good compound. You can see here. It's an absorption. So you will When you take an aromatic compound, you will see nice uh, vibrational patterns. And those are representations of the transition from here to here. Okay? I think we are going to take about maybe 10 minutes break. And then now at about 40, we will meet at 50. Which is actually 9.40. 9.50. Okay?